Station Houston on Space to Ground 2 for Frank. Hey, Mark. Uh, welcome back to the International Space Station. It's great to hear you. How do you hear me? Loud and clear. I don't. I can't tell you how much much of my brain I had to use to make sure I didn't say Houston Station when I called you. I completely understand. And like uh, you're staying really fit. I know that takes a lot of work. Um, of course, let, let me get the uh, formalities out of the way. You have been breaking a record every single day for yourself, but as of now, you started breaking a record for the longest space flight for the country. So, on behalf of the country, thanks for extending our record beyond 355 days. Every new day for us now is a record until you come home. Thanks for that. Well, hey, Mark, um, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, it's an honor to be associated with uh, someone like you, uh, someone who I consider a friend, a mentor, and a great role model for all the rest of us astronauts. So uh, thank you for what you did. Uh, and you and I both know that really we just represent an incredible team of thousands of people throughout the world uh, who make this happen and who have made it happen for 23 continuous years. Uh, and they've worked tirelessly and with great attitude. Uh, and really, we're just the uh, beneficiaries of that. So thank you to the uh, NASA team and to the international team that makes this incredible accomplishment uh, reality. Uh, and again, it's just a humbling to represent that team. Wow, you said that really, really well. Um, I couldn't agree more. We, it is certainly a privilege for us to get to represent this team in, in situations like this. Um, what do you think has been the, the funnest thing about being up there for this long? Well, uh, you know, I think um, the thing that I'm most proud of and, and really the most fun thing is really that um, right now I've, I've been in space with 25 other people. And by the time uh, Laurel and her crew get here, it'll be 28, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, and every one of them have just uh, been great crewmates, uh, very special people, and they hold special places uh, now because I've been able to share this experience with them. Uh, and just to think that, you know, I got here, and uh, of course, uh, Soyuz 67 was still here. I got to spend almost a, a month with Crew 4, uh, then almost half my time with Crew 5, and then Crew 6. And now I'll get to spend almost a month with uh, Crew 7. Uh, and just uh, the fact that um, to have flown with that many people and to have flown with uh, over half the commercial crews is really uh, pretty special. And so I think that's probably the thing that, uh, the memory that I'll hold most dear um, forever as part of this mission. I, I, lo I love that answer. I definitely felt like it was the people that I got to spend that much time with very intensively, both working and playing as much as we possibly can <laughs> when the opportunities present themselves. It was uh, really a treat that I got to share that time with wonderful people. So I'm glad that's the way you feel about that too. Um, what do you think has been the hardest thing being up there that long? Well, I think um, that's pretty easy because it's, uh, you know, separation from family. Uh, on, a, on a personal note, that's easily the, the most difficult challenge uh, that this has presented. Um, professionally, you know, I, I think just the fact that the team does make this appear so easy, uh, right? But the reality is we're in an, a completely unforgiving environment um, doing something that's pretty darn dangerous and, and incredibly challenging. And so just maintaining that mental sharpness uh, that, you know, just the readiness, right? Because 99.9% .9 of the time that we're up here, uh, it's just nominal ops. But uh, trying to maintain that edge to know that we can respond when we need to if something does go wrong um, gets challenging the longer you stay up here. And so, um, but again, like I've said, I, I've uh, had great crewmates who've helped in that endeavor. And I think we've been able to respond to everything that's happened um, pretty well. And I'm, I'm proud of how we've done as uh, different crews throughout this time. That's fantastic. Um, it's nice to have someone I can share these experiences with because that, that is all true. In fact, am I right? You've, you've done three EVAs, been a uh, suit IV for eight additional EVAs, and in the process basically upgraded the, the power supply system with the IROSAs for half of the space station? Well, uh, not quite that, but thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. so um, three EVAs and I think eight total. Uh, you know, and I, like I was telling uh, Crew 7, honestly, being an IV was way more nerve-wracking than uh, going out the door because uh, you feel like your, your friends' lives are in your hands, right? Again, you have an incredible team that's backing you up. 
uh, but you just have a much greater sense of responsibility when you're um, putting people out the door. And same thing when you're when you're flying the arm. Uh, I got to be M1 a couple of times, and and again that sense of responsibility for your buddies uh, is pretty pretty heavy. Um, but the EVAs themselves were just fantastic, as you know, the the views, uh, and really the fact that it's just such a challenging thing that you take so much preparation, uh, and then you go out there and you execute it. Uh, and, and the team just comes together watching that many people work, uh, put so much time and effort towards something, and then uh, seeing it go smoothly is just pretty incredible. And even when it doesn't go smoothly, the fact that uh, they have a response ready for just seemingly everything. So just the choreography and the teamwork that the spacewalks represent for me uh, were, were pretty special. Um, obviously, I wish I could have done a lot more, but um, the fact that we were able to do that many is, is truly an honor and a blessing. Uh, and it is pretty neat to look out the at the window and see those two little irosas uh, that we helped to put out there, uh, and that's that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, again, something that I'll always uh, cherish and, and holds dear in my heart. Being a suit IV, did you end up feeling a lot more confident on your fifth time doing that than the first? Not really, to be honest. I, I think um, it felt pretty steady the entire time. Uh, again, it helps to have a team uh, that's backing you up, uh, great procedures that you just kind of follow and make sure you don't miss anything. Um, and then, of course, obviously, you always have a, a crewmate that's backing you up. So, um, no, I think it's, it's a testament to our training and, and the team that we have behind us that it, it felt pretty constant throughout. Now, you had a pretty unique experience, too, because th uh, back in the shuttle era, we used to routinely have an astronaut be the IV, given the instructions to the their crewmates on board the spacecraft. So you got to, you were the first person, I think, since the space shuttle program came to a successful completion that actually IV'd from inside a spacecraft while your crewmates were doing the EVA. How did that feel? Well, you know, uh, I was laughing because uh, hearing you say that felt like I had Steve back uh, on station with uh, back in the shuttle days. Um, so, no, it's, uh, again, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty special and also a huge blessing that I actually had been um, a ground IV for the very first IROSA we put out. And so I was, I was pretty comfortable with that uh, role and, and with the team because I had been able to work that piece on the ground. And so it just uh, kind of was um, fortuitous that it worked out that way. And um, like I said, it, because of that uh, and that background, I, I felt pretty comfortable doing it. But it was pretty cool to, to add that component to it. Yeah, and I heard nothing but very positive reviews about how well you did at that. Um, so now this is a personal question. Um, I don't know how you feel about this, so I could be getting ready to embarrass you. But how's your backflip? Yeah, it's great. I'll show it to you when I get back home. <laughs> I, I hope you don't. I hope you don't. <laughs> nice answer, though. Hey, I think unless you want to talk about something else, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Um, uh, since it's been a long time since your your Soyuz instructors talked to you about landing and what to do, I'm going to remind you about a couple things that I might have made a mistake on. I succeeded with keeping my mouth shut when we hit the ground. That was a good thing, so I didn't bite my tongue off. And uh, But make sure you do keep your head in the seat. You will have the strength to be able to lift your head off the seat. So when you're tempted towards the end to check how, uh, how far above the ground you are, don't do that because it might creep up and get you before you thought, thought it was there because you do hit just as hard as everybody says you do. Yeah, the good thing about that is that um, I'll have some uh, help because I think my spine has uh, extended just enough that I, I kind of am wedged into my seat liner, so I shouldn't move very much at all. Uh, but, yeah, the only thing I want to address, uh, Mark, is, is really the fact that uh, to just acknowledge my family uh, because they've been the key component. You know, as much as I appreciate the team and, and how uh, critical um, the entire human spaceflight team has been to this, really my family has been kind of the cornerstone uh, that's inspired me to, to hopefully keep somewhat of a good attitude while I've been up here. Uh, the resilience that my wife and kids showed, uh, they, they faced a lot of challenges this past year uh, and they just thrived throughout the whole entire uh, process. And so. Uh, having that really um, made it so much easier to be up here, and I'm incredibly uh, grateful for for them and for that. And so I just wanted to give a acknowledgement of that and a shout out to them. So I'm incredibly uh, proud of them, and uh, obviously excited to be uh, home with them. Uh, so thanks again, Mark, for everything, 
and uh, I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Likewise, Frank, good words, very good words. Eastern ACR, this completes the event. Thank you for all the participants, and uh, we are going back to operational communication. Subscribe for more space. space, space, space.